tomorrow, I think. All right. So here we go. We're going to start off taking our arms across, getting our upper bodies warmed up between the shoulders. So my name is Nicole Street, and we'll have an hour and a half of slow flow Hatha yoga today. So welcome to class. And then we're gonna take our arms forwards and up, get a little bend in the back, go halfway forwards and reach for the head away from the hips. Then come down to a forward fold, Uttanasana. And then arms out, slowly rise all the way back up. Now we'll exhale and let the left arm go down and reach towards the left side. And so, up. Let me tell the connecting to And then and come, come back. And then exhale the other way. And then breathe in, come back up. And then we're gonna bring the hands to the heart center. Take a breath here. See if you can let your shoulders relax down the back a bit. Another breath through the nose, our ujjayi breathing, and making a sound as, as we breathe. Now let's take the arms up. We'll bend forwards all the way to Uttanasana, which is as far down as you're comfortable. And then back up to a flat back, reaching the head forward. And then down to Uttanasana again. And we're going to place our hands on the mat, spread the fingers out, and step back with the right foot. And then twist to the left. That left arm goes up above so that the arms are one on top of the other, pretty much. And spread the fingers out. Breathe here, a nice side twist. And then bring the hand back to the mat and we'll step our left foot back into a plank and take a breath here. And then on the exhale, let's bring ourselves down and go into either a low or a high cobra. So your elbows can be bent or you can scoot your legs forwards and reach upwards with the upper body. And now we'll turn our toes under and go into a downward facing dog and walk the dog. Alternating, pressing the heels lower and really getting some action throughout the legs, the ankles, the hips. And now let's stretch into our downward facing dog, reaching back with the hips and letting the chest lower towards the ground. And breathe. Nice full ujjayi breath. And one more breath here. And then we'll step or jump up to our hands, hang in a forward fold, come up to a flat back, reaching the head forwards. So we're elongating the spine and then going forwards into Uttanasa again, Uttanasana, and then arms to the side and hinging from the hips, slowly come up. And we'll take our arms all the way up again, nice breath in. Palms together, let's lower the hands to the heart center and breathe here in this version of our Tadasana. While I let some other people in, take a couple more breaths. All right, we've got Debbie coming in now, good. Nice Tadasana, and then we'll do the other side. So let's bend our knees, hook the arms down and up. 
then we'll fold forwards into Uttanasana or forward fold. Inhale up to a flat back, tabletop back. And then down to forward fold. This time let's place our hands on the ground and step our left foot back and twist to the right side. Right arm goes up, a nice lunge with a twist. So our arms are one on top of the other about and we can have our fingers all spread, stretching. You can even reach back with the left heel if you want. And then we'll bring our right hand back to the mat, step back into a plank, take a nice big breath in. And then keeping the elbows close, we're going to lower down towards the mat and then swoop up into a low or a high cobra. You can even lift the knees off the ground if you want to go into an up dog. And breathe here. And then we'll turn our toes under so that we can rock and press back into our downward facing dog and walk the dog, warming up those feet and ankles, knees and hips. Breathing our full Ujjayi breath. And now let's stretch into our downward facing dog, which means reaching with the hips, lowering the chest and shoulders and letting the head hang down. And then focusing again on the breathing. And then we'll step or jump up to our hands, hang in a forward fold. Come up to a flat back again, reaching forwards with the head, stretching the back, and then exhale back down to Uttanasana or forward fold. And then the arms go out to the side, hinge from the hips, come all the way back up and reach the hands up and weave the fingers together. Turn the palms up, stretch, maybe even give yourself a nice little back bend. And then bring the arms down in front, shake them out a little, step the feet farther apart, reach behind the back, Weave the fingers together there. Stretch the hands and knuckles downwards. So we're opening the chest. Shoulder blades are moving towards each other. And then we'll forward fold from here. Letting the arms come up. So go down just as far as it's comfortable. And let the arms come up and go over if they want. Breathing the whole time, so focusing on our breath whenever we get a chance. And then slowly coming back up. Lifting the arms up in the air. And then let's swing them forward and back. Nice big swings. Next, we'll come up on the fronts of our feet. So the toe pad and the toes. After we swing the arms a couple more times, then we'll take the arms forward and lift the heels. Try to balance here. If you want to hold on to something, you can. Just check your balance, practice it. And then let's swing the arms again. And now we'll do some work with our triceps. So we're going to be working the upper back of the arms, swing the arms a couple times, and then let's take them back and hold them up there, palms towards the sky, and breathe while you're holding the arms. Nice tricep work. And then let the arms come down and shake them out a little bit. Let's do some circles with our hips next. Nice loosening and relaxing for, for the hips now, keeping a nice soft bend in the knees. And 
And then we'll reverse that. While you're doing those, I'll double check, make sure no one's trying to get in. Good. I mean, if they did, that'd be great. <laughs> All right, nice hip circles. And then let's stand, take a nice breath in, reach up. We're gonna lower our left arm again and reach over to the side. And then come back up, a big breath in. And then exhale the other side. And we're reaching up and away too, not just scrunching over. And then coming back up. Now we'll let the arms come halfway down, spread the fingers, including the thumb, make circles. So if you go forwards first, that's fine. Doesn't matter which way, we'll just switch the direction few more times. Switch. And switch again. And again. Nice. And then bring the arms down, shake them out. Let's do some shoulder rolls. Nice. Big shoulder rolls. We want our shoulders to come in far enough to really work the lower part of the neck. Those muscles loosened up at the same time. Two more, then we'll go forwards. So let's switch now. All right, and now we're gonna separate the feet a little more, make some nice swoops around the body, and you can relax the arms and let them flop around onto your body. So either way is good. And a couple more times, each side. And then back to the center. We're gonna bend our knees, take a big breath in. Fold forwards again. So we're at probably about at the front of the mat, I'm guessing. Place your hands on the mat, step back into downward facing dog. And now we'll do a three-legged. So this time let's raise the left leg up, stretching it upwards, lowering the shoulders and the chest but stretching through the spine, holding that leg up as far up as it's comfortable for you, listening to your own body. And we'll bring that knee forwards up to the left wrist and go into a pigeon. So we have the left foot over on the right side. Now walk the right foot back, the foot and knee, until you feel a nice stretch in the left buttocks area. So we're stretching our piriformis mostly in this one. And then keeping the back straight, you can bend the elbows and lower part way down, chest towards thigh, or all the way down if you're flexible enough to do that at this time. And then some people like to put their head down on the floor. Now focus on the breath, take nice relaxing and deep breaths as you feel that stretch happen, little by little. One more nice full breath here. And 
So let's place our hands on the mat. Turn the toe under on the right foot. Lift back up into a downward facing dog. Walk the dog. And now let's stretch into our downward facing dog again. This time lift the right leg up into three legged dog. Stretching that foot away, lowering the shoulders and the chest, letting the head hang. Breathing. And now let's bring our right knee forwards to the right wrist. Have that foot at an angle, something like 45, and then walk the left foot and left knee back until you feel a nice stretch. Once there, you can start thinking about tipping forward from the hips if you need to. You may already feel plenty of stretch here. So just stay up in a semi-cobra. If you want, you can lower the chest, keeping the back straight. Little by little, you may be able to bring the chest down closer to the right leg. And then once you feel you're as far forward as it's comfortable for you with your back straight. And if you want to round the upper back down so you can relax towards the floor, that's fine. And breathe. Nice, full, ujjayi breath. One more breath here. Now place the hands on the mat. Bring the chest up. And then turn the left toes under so you can raise the hips up and take the right leg back. Walk the dog. And then we'll stretch into our downward facing dog again. Reaching those hips back so we really get a nice elongation through the spine. And we're gonna bring our knees down on the mat, sink the hips back into balasana or balasana and child's pose. So bring the forehead lower. Hands can stay stretched out so you get a nice stretch in the shoulders still. Breathe. Nice child's pose. If you ever feel like you are working harder than you want to and want to take a little break, you can always come back down into child's pose. Now let's move our hands out a foot over to the right side. You can even put your left hand on top of the right. Try to move the chest a little around to get a good small twist in the back. And then you can rest your head on one or both of your arms if you want and breathe. And we're gonna bring our hands back to the center. Take a nice deep breath here. And then on the exhale, move those arms over to the left side and do the same thing. I'm gonna make sure everyone's muted here. Okay, 
breathe your nice full ujjayi breath. Allow yourself to relax. And we'll move the hands back to the center and let's slide the hands towards us while we sit up on our heels. If this pose doesn't work for you, go ahead and find another comfortable seated pose. All right, let's take a breath in and take the arms above the head, stretching upwards and bring the hands to the heart center. Take a breath here, close the eyes. One more breath. Let's bring the hands down. Let's take our left hand onto the right knee, kind of the outside of it, and just take that right hand around behind you. Reach the crown of the head upwards, so we're drawing the spine upwards as we twist a nice, Easy seated twist. So go around as far as is comfortable. We want our chest to try to go around as far as the head, but we want to stay uh, comfortable. So listen to your own bodies. And then back to the center. Move the right hand under the left knee, move the left arm around, and stretch upwards from the hips upwards and to the left. Nice full breathing. And then back to the center. Let's come up on our knees. Take the right foot forward come down into a nice low lunge. So just letting the hips sink down low. We have our right foot out in front. I'll turn sideways in case anyone has any questions about it. This might clear it up. We want our knee to be above or behind the ankle. And you can have your hands on the knees or the hips or the ground if you need to. You have to lean forward for that. And now let's tip the hips back and draw the toes towards us. So our bodies are upright. And now hinging from the hips, let's tip the upper body forwards. Now intensify the stretch low in the leg. And just breathe here. And then bring that. Right leg in and take the left foot forwards and we'll repeat, sinking the hips slowly downwards, hands on the knees, hips, or tip forward so you can touch the ground. Whichever one works best for you. So little by little, our hips sink towards the ground. We have a nice arch in that front foot. We have our shoulder blades drawing together and our head is above the body. Just little things to check. Belly's drawn in and upwards. And then we'll tip the hips back. Lean forwards from the hips and either hold on to the thigh, the hips, or lean forward and up bending your knee if you need to, so that you can have your hands or fingertips on the ground, draw the toes back towards you. You can lean forward or you can stay upright, whichever works for you. We're getting a nice hamstring stretch now, so we want it to be in the legs, not at the bones, the hip bones. And then we'll bring that leg back and bring our hands down onto the ground. Separate the knees 
So that we're on all fours and we'll do some cow and cat next. So big breath in, reaching the head forwards, the hips back, letting a slight sag in the back occur so that you're comfortable and stretching the spine in a nice natural way. Exhale, draw the spine upwards, including the abdominal area. And go back and forth at your own pace. So with your breath. If your lung capacity is very large, you would want to take more time. So adjust so that it's right for your body. We want our fingers to be spread way out and all parts of the hand, except maybe the little arch in the middle is connected, are connected to the ground. So we're building strength in our fingers and our hands. And one more. And back to neutral. Let's do a shoulder stretch next. So we give our hands a little bit of a break in between. Let's take our left arm out to the side. Pinwheel upwards as far as it's comfortable for that left arm to go. Keep breathing. And then on your next exhale, go ahead and swoop down so that your left shoulder comes onto the floor and that arm is out on the other side. So we want to feel a nice gentle stretch in the outside of the shoulder that's on the ground. Now let's come back up to all fours and do the same on the other side. Let's take the right arm out, fingers are spread, twist so you can bring that right arm higher. Still breathing. And then on the next exhale, let's swoop the right arm under so we can lay the right shoulder on the floor. Adjust how you need to to so feel a nice, gentle shoulder stretch and then just focus on the breath. And last breath here. Then we're going to go ahead and come back to all fours and reach our right leg back, our left arm forwards, and then lift the right leg. So we're elongating through the body because our hand and foot are reaching away from each other. And then we'll bring those limbs down. Send the left leg back and the right arm forwards and then lift the left leg and start reaching. And then we'll bring those limbs back. Bring our forearms on the floor, spread the fingers out, connect them to the mat, turn the toes under, and let's go into a nice down. Dolphin pose next, lift the hips up, reach back with those hips. It'll probably 
Mean that your heels will gradually get closer towards the ground. And draw the belly in. Let the shoulders stay up nice and firmly, but the chest can sink downwards a bit. My head can even touch the ground. And breathe. From our dolphin, we'll be moving right into a sphinx pose. So let's walk the feet back just a little and then bring the body down, bring the hips down right into a sphinx. So the elbows, we're on our elbows, fingers are still connected to the floor, but our hips are down now and our Head can reach upwards on our inhales and then draw the upper body, the torso, slightly forwards as you exhale. Inhale, lift. It's very subtle. Exhale, draw it forward. So if, if someone were looking, they might not even know that you're doing all that great work. So lift, breathe in. And exhale, draw forwards. And then we're gonna bring ourselves down, let the elbows go out. Ah, oh, nice rest. Now we're gonna take our right hand and reach for our right foot, so bend at the knee, and bring the right foot in toward the buttock so we can stretch our right quadricep. Breathe here. Taking nice full of jai breaths. And one more. Full breath on this side. And then we'll let our right foot go down and turn our heads the other way and reach back for the right foot and bring it in and then focus on your breath. Now let's release the left foot, come back to all fours. We'll do a nice stretch. We're gonna take our right leg back and then swoop it over to our left side and then curve our upper body so we can look at that right foot, which is on the left side. Nice full Ujjayi breath, and then we'll switch to the other side and bring that right foot back. Now go ahead and send that left foot behind you. And swoop it over to the right side. I don't know how long that the camera did something funny. Okay, so look over at the left foot, which is on the right side now. And breathe.
and then let's bring the foot back in. We're on all fours. We're gonna sit back on our heels now. So the Zoom program was asking for verification. I don't know if you guys got to do both sides, but if you didn't, go ahead and do the other side too. Let's take a breath in and reach up. We're gonna to go to the left side, bring the left hand down. The left elbow will bend and we'll just do a nice seated reach. Stretching down near the right hip and the low back over there, breathing. And we'll come back up and raise the left arm upwards. Be ready to bend the right elbow and reach over on that right side, keeping the arm in line with the ear if you can. Feeling the stretch low down back in the hip area. And then come all the way back, nice. Okay, so now we're going to turn our heads from side to side. And then we'll bring the head back to the center and nod up and down, warming up the neck, loosening it. more times and then we'll dip our chin down towards our chest tuck it in a little bit so you feel the stretch move way up in the neck and let's bring the head back up let's take another breath in reaching upwards and then arms all the way down. Come down onto one hip and swoop the other leg so that you're kind of cross-legged and then have a foot on each side and try to get those knees to stack on top of each other. We're going to do our Go Mook Asana. So we have our knees stacked. And then once you get as stacked of knees as you can, Everybody's at a different place that every day is different too. So if you're in a very comfortable cross-legged like uh, Sukhasana, that's fine too. Just um, do what's right for you. And then whichever knee is on top, let's go ahead and raise that arm up and bend at the elbow. And now we're gonna try to reach that hand, that right uh, well, whichever one is on top, reach the other one and see if you can get those fingers to touch in the back. Um, if you're reaching towards the other hand, that's fine too. And you can even, uh, as you gain flexibility, maybe hook those hands together. So this is our Gomukasana, which is in English, cow pose, cow face pose. How they got that name, I don't really know. All right, so another breath. And then we'll slowly start coming out of it with the arms. Have the fingers facing forwards and lean back into your hands, bending the elbows and undo the legs that way. Get them to go straight in front of you so that it's a partial boat. And then cross the legs with the other leg on top as, and get the knees as close together as it's comfortable for you. So whichever knee is on top, that's the one we're gonna reach up with and bend at the elbow. And then take the other arm behind and reach the fingers towards each other. We're going to keep our head upright and above the body. 
So do what you can in this pose, as long as you're comfortable listening to your own body's needs, then that's great. Nice, full breathing. And then we'll slowly start coming out of it with the arms. And then have them go behind you and undo your legs. We're going to go into a crab neck. So the fingers are still pointing forwards. And this time we're gonna have the feet about hip distance apart and raise the hips up. So we're kind of in a tabletop between the knees and the shoulders or as best we can. If you're not quite up there, that's fine. And then we're gonna to try to walk a little bit forwards with the hands and the feet, and then a little bit back, and then a little to the side, and a little bit back to the other side. And then lower the hips down and come to a very comfortable cross-legged pose. So some people like to have one leg out in front, a nice, easy sukhasana, or a schoolyard crossing. So having the feet just tucked under a little bit under the legs and knees. Or you can take one foot up near the other hip, and that's a half lotus. Or you can take both feet up to the hips, and that's a full lotus. So whichever one you want to sit in is perfectly fine. And then we'll turn our hands so the palms are up. We're gonna bring our first finger today up to the thumb and, and uh, try to sit up straight so the lower back is nice and straight. Draw the shoulder blades together, reach upwards with the crown of the head and then close the eyes. Focus on the breathing. Nice, full, dry breath. And as you breathe all the way into the lungs so they spread out, stretch those intercostal muscles. As you breathe out, you can draw the abdominal muscles inward and upward. That helps to press out all the air. And all these deep breaths are helping us to Massage our internal organs and also the practice of nice deep breathing on a regular basis helps us to do it more naturally when we had a regular course of our day and is especially nice to tap into in times of stress. So let's breathe here for another maybe six or eight breaths. We're almost finished with our breathing here. So for the last breath, really try to relax even your facial muscles. And then let the hands come down. Help your legs unwind and take them out in front of you. And just kind of take the knees up and down, loosen up that part of the leg. All right, 
Now let's bring our right foot in towards the groin of the left leg and take the left leg out to the side as far as you're comfortable taking it. And we'll do a nice side twist. So we want our torso to go in the same line as our outstretched leg. So turn it to the side and then take the right arm up and then we'll start curving toward the left foot. So our, our goal, our main goal here is to elongate the spine and also get a bit of stretch in the leg. And then slowly come up, turn towards the foot. You can have your hands on either side of the leg on the floor or hold on to the leg or reach out for your toes. But now the chest is facing the toes and we keep our back as straight as we can. And then slowly come back up and switch the legs. Now we have the right leg out to the side. We're going to twist the body so it's in line with that outstretched leg. And then lift the left arm, stretch it up, and then start curving toward the right foot. Reach with the upper body. Keep the arm in line with the ear as much as you can and breathe. One more breath here. Then we'll slowly come up, turn towards that foot with our chest and start reaching. Maybe just the right hand towards the right foot but we want our chest to go around as far as it's comfortable to do. And breathe, keeping the back as straight as we can manage. And then bringing the legs back in, back into our cross-legged pose. Okay, now we're going to stretch our neck. So let's take our right arm, the forearm laying just very lightly on top of the head. Lift the crown of the head and tip the head to the side. And then with your other hand, reach for the shoulder and draw downwards so you get a nice stretch along that side of the neck and out towards the shoulder. And we'll slowly bring the head back up, switch to the other arm, Bend at the elbow. It's just barely there on top of the head. Lift the crown of the head, tip to the other side, and bring the other hand up to the shoulder, draw it downwards. Feel a nice stretch in the neck. And breathe. And we'll slowly return the head to the center. And we'll do some of our bellows breathing. So we're going to bring our hands up to our, uh, up to our heart center. Lift the elbows a bit as we reach out with them, as we take in more air. Big, big breath in. Let the head go back a little. And then exhale like a bellows is empty. Then breathe in, filling the bellows chamber, which is our lungs. And then exhale. Two more. Breathe in. Exhale. Last one, breathe in. And exhale. Very nice. Now let's swoop our arms around, I mean, legs around behind us. Come on to all fours. Turn the toes under, come up into a downward facing dog again, walk the dog. And then stretch into the downward facing dog. 
Take the right leg up. And we're gonna bring the knee towards the right elbow or towards the chest. Send it up on the inhale, up and back. Forward and in on the exhale. Again, up in the back, reach, and forwards. Inhale, reach. And exhale, forwards. And now switch. And we're gonna take the left leg up. Exhale, bring the knee into the chest or over to the left elbow. Inhale, reach the leg up and back. Exhale, forwards. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, forwards. Last one coming up. Inhale, reach back. Lower that chest. And then bring the leg forward. Replace the foot. Step the feet forwards to the hands. Hang in a forward fold. Let's come up to a flat back on the inhale. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Arms out to the sides. Come all the way up slowly. So your, your blood pressure equalizes and then reach up above. Bring the hands to the heart center into our Tadasana again. Take one more breath here. And then let's let the arms come down and give them a shake. The shoulders too, hands. All right, it's time to take a drink now and then we'll do a couple more uh, asanas. We'll do our Virabhadrasana series. And we'll also do our Virksasana, our tree pose. In fact, let's do tree pose next. So standing on the left foot, let's bring our right foot close. Draw the abdominal area in so you're nice and firm in the hip area. Bring the foot up off the floor if you can. You can hold on to things if you need to. Just depends on so many factors how you do this each time. Take the knee out towards the side. We want the hip to come in. So we're gonna be pulling through the leg upwards and bring the hands to the heart center. And then slowly we'll take the arms up higher. Elbows go out to the sides. They're in line with the ears. And then extend the arms just as far as your body wants you to. Ideally the Arms can touch the ears, but it's a process. So do what's right for you. Listen to your own body. And then we'll let the arms go out to the sides. And when we do, let's bring our shoulder blades close together. So we'll really work that upper back. And the palms are up. A nice reminder. Stay open to new ideas. Let them flow in. And then we'll take the arms back up above the head. Reach up through the legs again and the body. Get a little taller. And then bring the hands to the heart center. And then we'll bring the hands and the leg down. Walk it out. Walk, walk, walk. Now we'll switch to our right leg. So standing on the left, bring the right leg in. Whoops, standing on the right, bring the left leg in. 
I was gonna have you do the same one over again. Okay, so tighten the belly, lift the foot up if you can. Turn the knee outwards, bring the hip in, and we'll bring the hands to the heart center, lifting as we go. The hands come up, the elbows go out, and then we extend the arms farther up if it feels right. Breathe. If you wiggle or sway, that's fine. If you come out of it and just, that's fine, just come back in. After all, this is our practice. So, ah, take some nice deep breaths. We'll move our arms down so that we can change it up a little, draw the shoulder blades in. Our arms are now our a bit of our balance. Oh. Then we'll take the arms back up above the head, palms together, stretch upwards. And then we'll lower the hands to the heart center, take another breath. And then release it and walk it out. Woo -hoo -hoo. Very nice. If you want another drink, go ahead and get one. We're gonna go into a Burksasana. Oh no, we just did that. Um, uh, our warrior pose is next, Virabhadrasana. So um, go ahead and stand at the front of the mat and step back with the right foot. So we'll do our left foot forwards first and then sink into a nice high lunge so we feel a lot of stretch going on at the top of the right thigh and hip area you might want your right heel to go down a little or you might want to bend the knee a little more a little less we want our our bodies to be over the hips our knee to be over the ankle or behind it just not in front that's dangerous. And then we'll take our arms forwards and lift the arms up, stretching them as far as we can, and then anchoring the arms into the shoulder sockets. Now we can think about our gaze or our drishti, which is facing forwards or part way up, or you can continue as long as your neck feels good. Maybe you can even look between your hands and breathe. Another time, nice, deep Ujjayi breath. And then we'll lift up, turn the back foot out. So we open the right hip, take the arms forward and back, and then bend our left knee so that it's going straight ahead. And sink into your nice high lunge. We want our outer part of the foot to connect to the ground in the back and the front so that we can keep some arch in the foot so the ankles are sturdy. Yeah, that's a lot to think about. And then we'll lower our right arm, lift the left one, turn the palm back, stretch upwards, and then slide the right hand down a little bit so we can or easily sink into that curve, reaching with the hand. So we're getting a good stretch along the left side of the body. And then we'll slowly come up, take the arms front and back, and then let's straighten our left leg and adjust the stance because we're going into our triangle, trikasana. So let's go from the hips, tipping forwards, bring the hand to the leg, and then slide it down as far as you want it. You have the right arm go up, and then try to straighten through your back, especially the lower back, so that you're reaching from your hips out through the head. Mm 
elongating that spine and then slowly come back up. And let's turn to our right side and do some nice big circles with the arms. We get a good stretch in the upper arm shoulder here and breathe in, take it up higher, stretch into a star. And then again, we'll do this four times. So this is the second one. If you wanna go faster or slower, that's fine. Breathe in as you reach up. That's our expansion. And the last one, reach and bring the hands back, turn back towards the left foot, step forwards and walk it out. In fact, to loosen up before we do the other side, we'll just do some twisting. You can sing one of those twist songs in your head if you want to. Couple more times. So we get some good action right under the ribs and then shake it out a little. Walk it out a little more. And if you want another drink, go ahead and get it before we do the other side. We'll be stepping back this time with our left foot, sinking into our high lunge, making sure that right knee is going straight forwards and feeling a lot of stretch in front of the left hip. So that's our high lunge. Now let's turn it into Warrior one, taking the arms forward and up, stretching upwards, and then sinking the arms into the shoulder sockets. Now our gaze is straight ahead, but it can go up higher if the neck will allow. So listen to your own body and do what's right for you. Breathe, nice, calm, ujjayi breath. If you find you can't breathe calmly, then make the pose easier. And then let's lift up, turn the back foot out, twist the upper body to the side. Arms forward and back, shoulder blades in, sink into the lunge. Body is over the hip still. The right knee is going straight ahead and breathe. And then we'll lower our left arm, reach the right one up and then curve a little. Still really reaching with that right arm. So we get a great stretch through the spine. And make sure that right knee still feels like it's aimed straight ahead. And then slowly come back up. We'll adjust again and straighten the leg so we can do our triangle. And if you want to do modified triangle with your knee bent and your elbow to the knee, that's fine too. So either way, now tip forward. So you're hinging from the hips, bring the hand to the leg, take the other leg, arm up, and then elongate through the body. Reaching forward, straightening the spine at the lower part. And then we can think about things like spreading the fingers out, listening to our breath, Slowly coming back up and we'll turn to our left side this time. So let's take a breath in, reach up, arms above the head, then bend the arms and legs into a goddess. Nice, strong arms and legs, engaging as many muscles as you can. Breathe in, reach, stretching upwards again. Exhale, strength. 
Inhale, stretch. Exhale, work the muscles. Keep the belly in and up. And then again, reach up. And again, goddess pose. And then relax. Nice. Turn back towards the right foot, step forwards, and walk it out. We're going to go onto the floor next. So, probably, probably last chance to get your drink, but you can always stop and get it if you need it. So, we're going to lie on our backs next and put our legs up on a piece of furniture or the wall. You can hold your legs up there if you prefer it. But I have to say, it's much more relaxing if you have some support. Okay. All righty. So you can have your hips as close to that support as you want to, um, <clears throat> as long as you're comfortable. The legs are really up high, I suppose you get in a little more of a relief to the legs in a way. Now let's take our arms up and over for a nice breath in. And then exhale, bring the arms back to the sides. One more time, arms up and over. And exhale, bring the arms to the sides. And then we'll take the arms along the floor to the side and then as high as your arms are happy with. Exhale, take them back down towards the hips. So they're hovering or sliding. And one more, arms out. And then up. Arms out to the sides and then back to the hips. Nice. Okay, you can leave your heels on the support if you'd like, or you can lift the feet off the support, arms up, and we're gonna flex and point for a while. You can keep a bend in the knees and fold the feet as far forward and back as you can with the hands too. Just, just uh, make sure that it's comfortable for you. And then we'll hold a flex. So we want our toes and fingers to be pointing down towards the body, then forwards. So we get a nice point throughout the foot and stretch and then flex again. And then point again. And then if you took your heels off, go ahead and rest them down there again. Now we're gonna spread our toes out and our fingers out. And then we're gonna scrunch them together and then stretch them out and scrunch them together. So I went ahead and put my elbows on the floor. I didn't even notice, spread them out and scrunch them up. And we'll do one more, stretch them out. So make as much room as you can between the toes and then bring them together. And now let's draw our knees in towards the chest, make little circles, loosen up the hips a bit, and then back the other way. So we're gonna stretch our legs back up. You can rest them if you want, but we are gonna do circles around the ankle. So you might wanna lift them off the support. Otherwise, just do the modified version with your legs resting on the furniture or wall. And then we'll reverse. Just a little bit longer. And then bring the knees into the chest again. This time, grab onto each one. We're doing an upside down toad now. 
Bring the knees towards the shoulders or out beyond the shoulders to get a little bit of a groin stretch and really stretch in the hips and the back. And then send the legs back up. Nice. Now we're going to do our uh, second piriformis stretch. So we're going to cross our right ankle on the left knee and slide the left foot down a little. Flex the foot that's on top or both feet. And then see if you can press the right knee away from you, just using the muscles in the legs. That's what starts stretching that area really well. And then if you want a little more, once your, your left lower leg is, is uh, parallel with the floor, if you want a little more, go ahead and grab onto the top of the shin or behind the knee and draw it towards you a bit. That way you'll get an even deeper stretch. And some people like to tip to the left. If their, le if their right leg is the crossed over one. And that gives you even a deeper stretch. So you have a lot of options. And then focus on the breath. Try to avoid taking those little shallow breaths. And instead, take nice, deep organ massaging breaths, calming breaths. And then let's return the legs up there again and switch to the left leg crossing and then slide the right foot down until you start feeling the stretch in the left buttocks where the piriformis muscle is near the sciatic nerve. Okay, so again, once the lower leg is parallel, we'll want to bring it in, but you can also think about your left knee moving away and maybe, maybe then it's enough. If it's still not, then bring the right knee even closer. And breathe, concentrate on that breath. Work on your focus. You can close your eyes and just go by feel. Relax the shoulders. And breathe deeply. And we'll return the legs up. Take one more breath with our arms going up and over. Nice reach, let the chest open and then bring the arms back and we'll lower the legs. We're gonna scooch back on our mats so that we can have our uh, knees bent, our feet on the floor. We haven't done any half bridges today, so we're gonna do that next. So lying on the back, hands to the sides, arms to the sides, lift the hips up, wriggle the shoulders under and weave the fingers together if they reach. And then take those hips up as high as it's comfortable and breathe. We're gonna be using a lot of the muscles and the back of the legs and the buttocks to keep our hip level up. And we want our knees to be in at about hip distance apart. Maybe a little bit more, but not much. And slowly lower the spine down one vertebra at a time. Stretch the left leg all the way out. And move the hips over to the right an inch or two. And then with the left hand, let's roll the right knee across the body. 
And then reach our right hand way out to the side, lower the arm and shoulder. Now we have a good twist. Now let's take it into the neck by turning the head to the right. And then look out beyond the right hand. And then close the eyes and imagine that you're looking very far out from your hand, way out past the land and out into the ocean. You see beautiful big puffy clouds moving across the horizon. You can hear the waves. Breathe your nice full jai breath. Temperature feels just perfect. You can, you can hear and see birds, beautiful colors of the hillsides on the way to the ocean and beyond it across the bay. And one more breath here. Slowly roll back to the center. Now we're gonna bend our left knee, scooch our hips into the middle and bring our knees into our chest again. Breathe, nice deep breath. Then place the feet back on the ground and stretch the other leg out. So our right leg is straight. Now move the hips a little to the left. With the right hand, roll the left knee across and reach the left arm out to the side. Lower that back of the hand onto the floor so your palm is up, which is nice. And the shoulder sinks downward. And then let's turn our head to the left. Close the eyes, be back in a beautiful place where you can look out over the ocean. Relax your forehead. Relax the crown of the head, the back of the head. Relax your temples. So the forehead still relaxed. If not, relax it again. And then soften the eyebrows, the area around the eyes. No scrunching at the corners, just let them go. And then between the eyes, nice and soft, bridge of the nose, out into the cheeks. Relax all those muscles around the nostrils and the mouth and the tongue and finally the jaw. Nice and relaxed. And take another nice deep breath. And we'll roll ourselves back to the center, bend the right knee, scooch the hips into the middle, let the knees go out into a butterfly, and let the arms go out or, or bend them at the elbows so they can go up. Or place the hands at the bottom of the rib cage and feel your breath a couple times. Still, Nice and relaxed facial muscles. Let's bring the knees in, reach between them. Grab onto the big toes, stretch the legs up, and rock side to side in happy baby. 
Nice massage of the lower back. If you want it to go up a little higher in the back, bring your feet closer to the shoulders. And that'll shift the weight. The hips will go up and then you'll be rocking across your upper back. So you can also stretch one leg up, then the other, or you can rock all the way over to the outside of one leg and all the way over to the outside of the other leg. Any of those fun things to do are great. And then we'll come back to the center, bend the knees into the chest again, and grab onto the toes again and just do a nice wide leg stretch. So whatever is wide leg to you, maybe the feet are just a foot and a half apart, or maybe you can go out a bit farther. Bend the knees if you want, straighten if you want, as long as you're comfortable and you're getting a little bit of a stretch in the inner legs. And we'll bring the legs together. Place the feet on the floor, stretch the legs all the way out. Take one nice breath, arms up over the head, reach with the feet and legs too. And then exhale, return the arms to the sides or out a little ways if it's fine. Turn the palms up, bring the shoulder blades in and start letting go. Release the tension anywhere you find it in your body, and then allow your mind to release thoughts that you don't need anymore. Let them go for good. Or just release all your thinking for now, and you can return to what, what you want to later. So enjoy a beautiful Shavasana. We'll be here about five or six minutes anyway, six, I guess.
Then you start wiggling your toes and fingers, bringing your awareness back to our yoga. If you'd like to stay lying down, that's fine. You can wiggle your toes and fingers there and stretch your hands. Or you can slowly come up to seated position. And then we'll take our arms up and take a nice stretch. Hands down to the heart center. And then we'll breathe. Um, a big breath in for arms. Oh. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. Thank you for being here. Namaste. And good job. All right. Take care. Thank you for coming.